go to Google and type Rathod's IAS. Then you can see our website Rathod's IAS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 12th June 2022. So, Sunday's newspaper is important to cover your environment and ecology and even your science and technology related current affairs. So, don't skip this Sunday's newspaper. So, now let us try to see first topic. So, before that, let us try to see the quote. So, this quote it is regarding happiness. So, where you can use this quote of happiness? If you have gone through your ethics syllabus, you will be having a chapter regarding thinkers, that is especially philosophical thinkers. There we will be going to study about Indian philosophers and as well as Western philosophers. So, in Western philosophers, they will be mainly focusing on this happiness. So, because of this, you have to prepare course regarding this happiness for sure. So, happiness is a state of mind. It's just according to the way you look at the things. So happiness, it is nothing but it is a state of mind. So it is just according to the way you look at the things. So if you are looking at the things in a positive way, you will be getting happiness. So if you are looking at the things in a negative way, you will be get frustrated, anxiety, etc. So now let us try to say first topic, it is regarding trafficking bill. So if you see this article, which mainly talks about this uh, trafficking bill, so actually this bill which mainly passed in Lok Sabha but not in Rajya Sabha. Actually what is the context? Context here is who are survivor of this trafficking. So those people they are marching towards Delhi. They travel Delhi okay regarding this passage of this trafficking bill. So because of this this is the news and here what are the dimensions you need to know. So first you need to understand the context. So if you understand the context, then you can write this article as an example. And apart from that, you need to know what are the provisions of this trafficking bill. And recently in 2021 draft which mainly released. And you have to know what are the new provisions in this draft. And you have to know what is significance of this bill. And even you have to know some constitutional provisions or laws which are present in India. They are mainly focusing on this trafficking. So these are the some important dimensions that you need to know regarding this topic. So now this topic is important from your GS paper to under Indian polity. So in our polity, in our constitution, there are some articles which are mainly talking about this trafficking. So this is also important that you need to know some constitutional provisions also. Actually this trafficking related article which is present in our fundamental rights which mainly comes under the part 3 of our Indian constitution. So now first let us try to see the context. So if you see context survivors the names which are given in this article is Nazma, Padmini. They are both survivors of this human trafficking and they travel to this new Delhi in July 2018. So they are mainly asking that yes we have one bill that is trafficking of persons prevention protection rehabilitation bill 2018 so actually this bill which may introduced in our house for example if you're talking about Lok Sabha yes in Lok Sabha this bill which mainly passed but it could not be taken up to Rajya Sabha and and what happened the lapse of this bill happened so almost after four years okay after four years in June 2022 so both these persons Nazba and as well as Padmini they again met in Kolkata along with 24 other survivors of this trafficking and all of them they will go to this national capital territory that is Delhi and they mainly focus on the passage of this new version of this trafficking bill okay so this trafficking bill it is going to be tabled in the upcoming session of parliament so here this article which is also focusing on sessions of parliament so normally we will be having three sessions b m w budget session monsoon session and winter session and you have to know the time period when these sessions will be commenced and let me know which is the coming session of our parliament in the comment box so already i discussed this topic number of times so now it is the time for 
revision okay so after doing revision let me know so which is the coming session and what are the time periods of these three session budget session monsoon session and as well as winter session so if you're talking about this bill especially so the trafficking of persons prevention protection and rehabilitation bill 2018 so recently draft which mainly introduced in 2021 actually this draft which mainly published by ministry of women and child development in 2021 so if you're talking about what are the provisions of this new bill so if you're focusing on especially these provisions of this new bill so first one is it now extended to all citizens who are present inside and even outside india okay so the first important new provision here is it extends to all citizens who are present inside and even outside India and persons they will be carried by using some vehicles like for example you can talk about ships you can talk about trains aircrafts so persons on any ship or aircraft registered in India so wherever it may be or carrying Indian citizens wherever they may be so these also include under this new provision of this draft and this one is a foreign national or stateless person who has his or her residence in India at the time of commission of offense under this act so either it may be foreign national or any stateless person who has his or her residence in India they will be also taken into consideration and the law will apply to every offense of trafficking in persons with even cross-border implications as well. So these are some provisions in this new bill. And who are the victims here? So earlier only the protection used to give for the uh, children and as well as women. And now there is extension for even transgenders. So now transgenders as well as a person who may be the victim of trafficking, they are included okay and it also does away with the provision that a victim necessarily needs to be transported from one place to another place but it is the, it is not the thing like so only when a person who is uh, mainly transferred from one place to another place okay which is mainly defined as a victim it not me the provision now and if you're talking about penalty so minimum of about seven years and this punishment or this imprisonment will also go up to 10 years and the fine of about 5 lakh rupees in the most of the case of this child trafficking will be given and if there is any trafficking which we can see which is more than one child so whenever there is a more than one child trafficking is happening then the penalty will be life imprisonment so penalty will be life imprisonment so what is the significance of this bill so now transgenders for the first time they mainly included okay so they mainly bring under the ambit of this law because now we are seeing one important organized crime which is happening is organ harvesting so organ harvesting means nothing but so one person will be kidnapped and they will be taken to so and so place and what happened those organs in the body like kidney heart uh, sometimes we can talk about liver so organs they will be taken okay and those organs will be sold to the people who are in need so there are many movies which mainly depicts about this organ harvest okay so i also watched one movie of an ips officer okay and that movie is mainly related to this organ harvesting okay so also cases such as forced labor in which people lured with jobs ended up in other countries where their passports and documentation is taken away and they are made to work okay and it will be also covered under this new law for example i saw a number of case studies and even in the news uh, that i have special interest regarding some crime related news especially regarding this forced labor and uh, uh, this uh, trafficking of drugs and as well as humans so i i came up with number of uh, ground reports so there were some interviews i saw personally that so whenever people who are going to other countries in search of work especially so at that time what happened once they reached other country once they reached that home where they want to work 
so the owners of that home they will be taking away the passports of these people so without passports what happened without passports and without documents they can't get this uh, flight tickets to return back india so in this way here whenever owners are taking away the passports and as well as documentation so they had to work there as a forced labor and even those owners they are not going to pay much money as a salary for them as well for the work they are doing and they will be doing some excessive work and even sometimes sexual exploitation will be also happening so especially it is mainly seen in dubai right and if we are talking about some other legislations in india that mainly prohibits this human trafficking here is first one is article 23 sub class 1 so article 23 sub class 1 which mainly comes under our fundamental rights which mainly comes under part 3 of our indian constitution so article 23 sub class 1 in our indian constitution which mainly prohibits trafficking in human beings and as well as forced labor so if you are talking about especially some laws which are present in india we have immoral traffic prevention act of 1956 which mainly penalizes trafficking of a commercial sexual exploitation and even we have bonded labor system abolition act of 1976 we have child labor protection and abolition act of 1986 and juvenile justice act so these are the some important acts which mainly prohibits bonded labor and even forced labor in india and if you are talking about some sections of this ipc indian penal code we have section 366 a section 372 of ipc which mainly prohibits kidnapping and selling of minors into prostitution respectively so apart from all these laws and sections of ipc even we have factories act of 1948 which mainly guarantees the protection of uh, nationals rights of workers so these are some important things that you have to remember regarding this topic so once this bill which mainly introduced in the lok sabha that is in the next session so once this bill is passed then we will be getting number of articles regarding that so after once this is done we will be going to discuss about this topic in our future and next topic it is regarding india russia deal on radio equipment so this equipment it is very very important regarding aircrafts and this radio equipment it is related to this landing systems okay landing system so this article is important from gs paper to under international relations so here we are talking about india and russia deal so why this article is significant now so why we need to talk about this india russia relations already we are seeing russia ukraine war which is mainly happening and we are seeing russia ukraine crisis which is mainly seen so because of this issue even though when we are having this type of deal means we can understand what is the importance that is given by russia to india so as we all know that russia it is a all weather friend of india and even russia which mainly supported india in number of times and we even we are getting good technology okay technology regarding war regarding uh, studies lecture we said about kurunkulam uh, power plant so in all these area which is russia which is mainly helping us and we are getting good technology and latest technology from russia okay so now let us try to talk about this topic in a detail so here radio technical systems that is in short rts systems of russia which mainly signed a large scale contract with this aai that is airport authority of india and in this agreement they said that they are going to supply radio equipment they are going to supply radio equipment so if you see some details it mainly says that russian company that will manufacture about 34 sets of instrument landing systems okay and we are going for modernization of 24 airports in india so with this agreement we are going for modernization of our airports so we can also relate this article with infrastructure development infrastructure upgradation in india so with this with this uh, agreement this article says that we are going for modernization of 24 airports in india so this contract which mainly comes amid the war in ukraine and there is also pressure from the west on india to diversify the dependence for the defense deal with russia and according to this contract the first part of this landing systems they are mainly going to be shipped before november and the payments and the transactions regarding this which is mainly carried out in the national currencies 
So why in the national currencies? As you all know, Russia, which is mainly banned from this fifth, okay, from this fifth payment system. So because of this, now we need to go for carrying out of this deal in the national currency. So already we discussed about this fifth number of times. So please revise this topic regarding this fifth. And a contract between this company RTS and Airport Authority of India, which has become a breakthrough for Russian businesses in highly competitive market of the ground based radio equipment in India. And this article says that there is no doubt that successful execution of the contract will open up new opportunities. Yes, whenever we are having these agreements, that will help to come up with the new opportunities and even implementation of joint products that will help to modernize airport infrastructure. So if we are talking about next article which mainly says that Pakistan hopes for relief on FATF sanctions, that is Financial Action Task Force sanctions. So now, let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. Already, I think in the last year, we discussed about this FATF sanctions on Pakistan. Again, now this topic is in news and we need to know what is happening in this FATF regarding this Pakistan. So this article is again important from your international relations, which mainly comes in the GS paper too. So what are the dimensions? So you need to know dimensions regarding. So when this Pakistan which is placed in the grey list of this FATF. So first one is you have to know about. So when did Pakistan placed in the grey list? So after placing the grey uh, list, what are the sanctions? Okay, what are the things uh, which mainly imposed on this uh, Pakistan? And whether those things which are achieved by this Pakistan or not, we need to know that. And apart from that, we need to know some facts regarding this FATF itself. So what is this FATF? What is the mandate of this FATF? And how many lists are present? And what happens if a country which is placed in this grey list? So these are some important dimensions that you need to know as an UPSC aspirant. So now let us try to see all those dimensions. So if you see context, it mainly says that Pakistan is hoping for some reprieve at this international watchdog that is financial action task force. Actually here this plenary session of this financial action task force that is going to be held from June 14th till June 17th. So because of this what happened announcing of this meeting FATF secretariat which mainly said that they are going to discuss about the progress which made by some countries which are mainly placed in the grey list including this Pakistan. So because of this this is in news. So if you are knowing about the background actually actually FATF financial action task force which mainly issued 27 point action plan after placing this uh, Pakistan in the grey list in 2018. In 2018, here Pakistan which mainly placed in this grey list. After once this Pakistan which is placed in this grey list, it mainly given like 27 point of action plan that should be followed. So this plan which is mainly focusing on curbing of money laundering and as well as terror financing. And Pakistan was first put on this list in 2008 and later on removed in 2009. And again, Pakistan was under monitoring between 2012 to 2015 and again placed in this grey list in 2018. So, since 2018, so it didn't came out of this grey list of this FATF. So, Pakistan's inclusion in this grey list which mainly adversely impacted the country's prospects of obtaining the financial assistance from the world bodies. For example, IMF, for example, World Bank and as well as Asian Development Bank. So from all these banks, there is no proper financial assistance to the Pakistan. So after this country, which mainly placed in the grey list. So Pakistan was put on the grey list by Paris based FATF. So actually it is a Paris based FATF. Actually this FATF which mainly established in 1989. Actually this FATF, it is an initiative of this G7. And this FATF, it is a policy making body. And this body which mainly works to generate necessary political will to bring the national legislative and regulatory reforms. So actually this FATF, it is intergovernmental body. And this body which mainly established in 1989. And this body which is initiative of this G7. And this FATF, 
it is a policy making body okay it is a policy making body it mainly generates the necessary political will political will and it is mainly focusing on this to bring national legislative and regulatory reforms in the various areas so we are talking about this fatf secretariat which mainly located in paris so we are talking about role and as well as function of this fatf so first and the foremost thing is it will be examined and it will mainly develop measures to combat money laundering it is mainly focusing on combating of money laundering in october 2001 fatf which main expanded the mandate to incorporate the efforts to combat terrorist financing as well and next one is in 2002 where it also added efforts to counter the financing of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and if we talk about composition of this fatf fatf mainly comprises about 37 member jurisdiction and along with this two regional organizations as well so if we are talking about consider in the gray list okay so whenever any country which is mainly placed in this gray list so what will be the implications so there will be economic sanctions from some international bodies like imf world bank and asian development bank and because of this they will be having some problems regarding getting loans from imf world bank and asian development bank and even other countries and there will be reduction of international trade that will be having some negative impact on the economy of that country and there is also international boycott so this is about this topic in detail and i want to give you main question that is what is a mandate and objectives of this financial action task force discuss and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding indo pacific security so china threatens indo pacific security so this article is important from your gs paper to under international relations so now let us try to talk about this article in a great detail so if you see context it mainly says that your security of defense your security of defense that is austin he mainly focused that american support for taiwan american support for taiwan on sunday he mainly suggested that asia's premier defense forum that recent chinese military activity around the self governing island which mainly threatens to change the status quo so here what happened in this chai taiwan there is increasing of presence of china which is mainly seen so because of this here us secretary of defense he mainly said that so mainly the asia's premier defense forum that the recent chinese military activity around the self governing island which mainly threats threats the change to change leads to the status quo change to the status quo so if you see details it mainly says that whenever he is speaking to the shangri-la dialogue okay shangri-la dialogue in singapore so this statement which is mainly said that steady increasing of provocative and as well as destabilizing military activity that is seen near taiwan so it mainly including almost daily military fights near island by the people of republic china and next one is mr austin and washington they also remains committed to the one china policy and they mainly recognizes uh, beijing must allow the uh, beijing must allow informal informal relations as a different styles with this tape so it mainly recognize that yes beijing must allow this informal relations and even different styles with this tape so here taiwan and china split during the civil war in 1949 but china claims the island it is in it is own territory and it has not rule under using military force to take it so here china also stepped up its military provocations against democratic uh, taiwan in the recent years and also aimed to accept the beijing's demands to unify its communist mainland so here the important main focus which mainly on peace stability okay peace and stability is all the important areas and here this uh, austin also said that here prc moves are mainly threatening and even undermining the security stability and as well as prosperity of this indo pacific region so these are some important things which mainly said by here mr austin okay so now let us try to see some important uh, mains regarding points 
from this Indo-Pacific region. So what are the recent new geopolitical developments that are mainly seen in this Indo-Pacific region? So if you see the location of this Indo-Pacific region, so here we have Indian Ocean and here we have Pacific Ocean. So this entire region is called as Indo-Pacific region. So in this Indo-Pacific region, we need to talk about US strategy, European Union strategy and even other important strategies. So US Indo-Pacific strategy, which mainly recently seen in use. So recently US administration announced that a long awaited Indo-Pacific strategy and this strategy which mainly focuses on building collective capacity. So they are mainly focusing on building of this collective capacity in the region and it mainly includes China and it mainly includes a China that China which is mainly increasing its power okay it increasing its, uh, its strategic uh, environment here and if you're talking about European Union's Indo-Pacific strategy here European Union has recently come up with Indo-Pacific strategy and this strategy which mainly aims to enhance engagement it means it mainly focusing on engagement across a wide spectrum and European Union already sees itself it already sees itself Indo-Pacific region as a natural partner regions okay natural partner regions and we are also having a significant role in the Indo Indian Ocean littoral states and ASEAN area and Pacific island states okay European Union's Indo-Pacific strategy which is mainly focusing that mainly aiming to enhance engagement across a wide spectrum in this region and we know that it is also having some natural partner regions in this region as well and recently we came up with this ACUS Australia UK and US grouping so it is a trilateral security partnership between this Australia UK and as well as US so this security grouping ACUS will focus on advancing strategic interest in this Indo-Pacific region so the important major highlight of this arrangement is the sharing of US nuclear submarine technology to Australia so Indo-Pacific Indo economic framework here it mainly says that nearly every one of the nations in this part of the world recognizes the sitiness and as well as aggressiveness of China. So to deal with China, US at the recently held Quad Summit in Tokyo, which mainly launched this Indo-Pacific economic framework as well, that is IPEF. So this IPEF which mainly focuses on fine tuning of four major pillars First one is they are focusing on digital trade, next one is resilient supply chains, green energy commitments and even fair trade. So these are the important four pillars of this IPEF. So if you are focusing on the significance of this Indo-Pacific region. So as you all know that shifting of power which is mainly happening from west towards east that is towards Atlantic Ocean towards Indo-Pacific region. So Indo-Pacific region which has more than half of world's population and it is having population like 2 billion people they are mainly living under this democratic rule in this region and this region which mainly generates about one third of world's economic output okay so because of this this region is economically very very significant and three of the most important allies that is US and Japan South Korea Australia they were located here and more than one third of this foreign trade of the world which mainly happens to this region and the world's largest economies they are located in this Indo-Pacific region for example China, India, Japan, Indonesia, South Korea, Thailand, Australia, Taiwan, Malaysia and Philippines okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic is regarding microplastic so microplastic found in Antarctica so this article is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes in the GS paper 3. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context it mainly says that scientists they found microplastic. So these plastic are very very fine species of plastic and the size it is less than a grain of rice. So what happened recently the freshly in the freshly fallen uh, snow in Antarctic region. So the first time they found this microplastics are present and whenever this microplastic which is present in this uh, snow that will leads to accelerating that is lead to increasing rate of melting of ice. 
so already we are facing this problem of melting of ice in this polar regions so because of this microplastic which is present here that will be increasing that will be catalyzing this uh, this action that is melting of ice so if you see details it mainly says that these findings which mainly recently published in cryosphere gen journal which mainly brought into light brought into light that there is a serious threat to this antarctic region as well so in late 2019 a student of the university of canterbury canterbury in new zealand he uh, collected some samples from this ross shelf in antarctica and research found that there were some plastic particles in every sample which mainly collected okay and this antarctic ocean which mainly covers about 8.5 million square kilometers okay it mainly represents about 5.4 percentage of this earth's oceans and the marine ecosystem is very very vulnerable here for example krill krill is nothing but shrimp like animals okay they make up large nacelles important components for whales seals penguins etc and krills which mainly mistakes microplastic as their food and they will be taking this food such that what happened this poisonous material that will be transmitted from one generation to another generation and even we can say bioaccumulation and even even the transmission from one food chain to another food chain that mainly happens and here if you are talking about amount of plastic which mainly calculated here is about 500 kilos of micro beads for from this personal care products and 25.5 billion synthetic fibers they entered the water per decade okay as a result of tourism as a result of fishing and even scientific uh, activities in the area so it is also known whether this microplastic flow there from one ocean to another ocean so although scientists they are having data and some exact quantities is limited so it is known that microplastics are found in all layers of this antarctic region so we are focusing on this microplastic so if you see the size here is less than 5 mm in diameter so we are having two types that is primary and second one is secondary so primary microplastic means are very very tiny particles and these particles they are designed for commercial use okay and for microfibers etc and micro beads they are mainly found in some personal care products for example sunscreen lotions for example if you are talking about face washes you can see this micro okay microplastics and we can see some plastic pellets and as well as plastic fibers also seen and if you are talking about this uh, secondary microplastics they are mainly formed from the breakdown of larger particles in the water bodies so if you see this image it mainly talks about life cycle of plastics so whenever anything which plastic which is mainly thrown on the ground so that will be going into runoff and enter into water so from the water it will be enter into the water cycle okay so in this way here microplastics mainly relating to earth which is mainly happening so we're talking about what are the impacts of this microplastic so first if you are talking about oceans yes these microplastics they are one important source of pollution in the oceans they may accumulate by breaking into small constituent pieces or particles and finally they will be settling down okay and next one is according to iucn at least 8 million tons of plastic which mainly ends up in oceans every year and out of this 80 percentage they will be becoming all marine debris and next one is even the unep united nation environment program which mainly said that last four decades the concentration of these plastics which mainly appears to have significantly very very high and if you are talking about impact on marine organisms so marine organism for example fish crabs prawns they consume this minute plastic particles and they mainly add them to their food chain and leads to finally bioaccumulation and next one is on land microplastics are the major pollutants of land and they reach the water bodies like rivers lakes etc through soil agriculture and plant health is also affected and if you are talking about humans human health it is a matter of concern as plastic which may be used by us in our day to day routine and next one is here this microplastic will also add to the human blood so i think uh, three months ago we discussed about one article regarding in in the human blood also there were some samples of this microplastics are found and a study which mainly conducted by this wwf for nature which mainly revealed that average person consume 5 grams of plastic 
okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says hit by debris so this article which is mainly talks about james webb space telescope so this article is important from your science and technology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 and you can expect prelims based question and even means based question from this topic for sure so now let us try to see the context if you see context it mainly says that the james webb space telescope has been hit by a micro meteoroid so we need to know about what is this micro meteoroid so you can get a question like so recently a micro meteoroid is seen in news so what it is related to so if you see it as it mainly says that nasa says the strike or strike to the telescope's primary mirror segments will not affect its performance so what happened these micro meteoroid which came and which mainly hit this primary mirror segment and here nasa says that after this strike also it will be not going to affect the performance of this telescope so the space telescope which has engineered to withstand micro meteoroid impacts okay so this is a thing which mainly said by nasa so the collision which had caused some detectable damage to one of 18 primary mirror segments to the spacecraft so the impact on this james webb telescope which mainly meant that the mission team will have to correct this distortion which mainly created by this strike so if you are focusing on what is this micro meteoroid so it is a particle which is mainly the smaller than a grain of sand every day in our earth's atmosphere we have millions of this meteoroid and as this micro meteoroid so most never uh, they will going to reach the earth surface because whenever they are entering into the earth atmosphere they will be burnt okay because of intense friction so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic is regarding tonga eruption so i think in january in january we said about the news regarding this tonga eruption i even showed a small video clip like so how this happened okay how this uh, a volcano which mainly erupted in this tonga so actually this was a very very sensation because here uh, if you know this okay if you have recall uh, some information regarding this tonga eruption then you can appreciate yes what i'm saying here so this article is important from your geography point of which mainly comes as gs paper one so if you see context it mainly says that researchers they started they started studying this eruption in the Tonga Islands in the South Pacific region that happened on January 15th. Actually, it was so explosive in nature. So, if you see this image, I think you might got recall something, right, regarding this Tonga Island. Yes, I explained this topic in detail at that time. So, if you see the details, it mainly says that evidence gathered by two groups, they suggested that when the Tonga volcano, which mainly happened, what happened enormous amount of magma which may released and this magma which may be reacted with water violently so because of this what happened that led to the uh, smoke which is mainly spread about 20 kilometers so i want to give you an example so if you are heating a pan okay so if you did the sandwich and if you heated the pan so as soon as you did your work so you are taking that pan and keeping under the water what happened suddenly the smoke will be coming outside so that is a reaction which mainly happened here so if you are talking about location of this hunga tonga hunga hapai volcano so it is located here here we have new zealand here we have australia here we have indonesia here we have japan canada us chile okay so this region which is mainly located on this pacific ring of fire so this Tonga volcanic eruption it is underwater volcano eruption which mainly happened in the south pacific region which mainly happened uh, in january okay so actually after once this eruption happened this uh, plumes and the smoke which mainly spread up to 20 kilometers into air okay so here we can see small small islands are there we have tonga here we have new zealand here new caledonia and we have fiji one out two solomon islands papua new guinea so you have to remember these locations of these islands as well so if you're talking about some facts regarding this tonga it is a tonga volcano eruption it is a, like a underground volcanic eruption and here it mainly contains two small uninhabited islands like hunga hapai and as well as hunga tonga 
So Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano had erupted regularly over the past few decades because it is mainly located on this Pacific ring of fire. Okay, so uh, actually what happened uh, in 2009 and 2015, 14, so hot jets of magma and steam exploded into the waves. But these eruptions are very much small when we are comparing with this 2022 January eruption. So in the 2022 January, it was like one of the massive explosions that volcano is capable of producing roughly every thousands of years. Okay, so here at that time we uh, analyzed that uh, fuel coolant interaction is one of the important reason behind the explosion, but it is not the case here. Okay, because of this violent reaction with the magma with water that led to this event. And now let us try to say today's question is the first one it is regarding constitutional bodies. So among the following constitutional bodies which of the following does not have financial autonomy, one is election commission, next one is contract auditor general. This one is UPSC Supreme Court. So for election commission, they are not going to get uh, get from this consulted fund of India. So correct option is one only. And next question is regarding panchayats. So constitution of India prescribes that panchayats should be assigned the task of preparation of plans for economic development and social justice. Yes, of course. And this one is the process of removal of the state election commission similar to the removal of the judge of state high court. Yes. So that option is both, three is the correct option. And today's question is the first one is regarding UPSC, second one it is regarding 73rd Constitution Amendment Act. So please try to read the statements you are given and try to give me the correct option in the comment box. And now let us try to see today's Hindu PDF. So before seeing Hindu PDF, I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathors as we came up with this mains answer writing practice course of one year and the last date for registration is today okay actually here from tomorrow onwards the question will be given to you so from tomorrow onwards this course it is going to be get started so the uh, so the admissions uh, will be there for the first week of this uh, okay first week of starting of this course that is till 20 you can see admissions will be going on but the course it is going to be started from tomorrow so if you if you want to join this course, so please visit our website Rathor Science Academy. There you can click on the course list. There you can see this mains answering course in a pink color box. And there you can go for buying of this course. So if you have any doubts regarding this course, so please contact me on this number 8074765513. And this is also the WhatsApp number. And you can also text me on this number in WhatsApp so that I will be sharing you the details of this course. And this is one of the excellent course and i can say like so this course is very very useful and we can assure you that within one year if you are following our timetable our schedule so we ensure you are going to complete your gs1 2 3 and 4 within one year and there will be essay writing practice and even your case study practice as well. so so this course is very very excellent course you can join this course okay and apart from that, we also came up with foundational course for UPSC CS 2023 and 2024. And in this foundational course, we are going to provide about more than 600 hours of classes. We are discussing each and every subtopic which is present in your syllabus. And we are focusing on conceptual clarity. We are discussing previous explains and ask us means questions also. So in this way, this course is very, very useful to clear your UPSC. Okay, so the cost of this foundation course is very, very affordable. It is just 60,000 rupees with a validity of two years. And if you join this foundation course, you will be getting prelims, test series and as well as one year answering course for free. And apart from that, if you are weak in a single subject like history, economy, geography like that, you can take this individual courses also. So if you want to watch the demo videos, you can visit our website rathosiceacademy.com. There you can register with your email ID and you can watch three demo videos which are of free of cost. And after watching these demo videos only, you can go for purchasing of the course. So if you have any doubts, so please contact us on the number which is given on the screen. So now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu PDF. So date here is June 12th and this is Delhi edition. So in the first page, so in the first page, there is nothing much important regarding our UPSC. And the city page, I found that MCD, Municipal Corporation of Delhi to deploy drones to survey capitals, landfill sites. So here, if you're talking about applications of drones here, we can use for even capital landfill sites. Okay, land to identify this landfill sites. So this is also an important application of the drones that you can add. 
and if you move forward there is nothing much important here and in this states page in page number 5 there is an article regarding this passage of trafficking bill so you can refer this article and I discuss this article this is the first article of discussion and if you move forward in this sixth page also there is nothing much important and you can go directly to this page number 8 so in this page number 8 you can see one article regarding the places of worship act okay so you have to refer this article and if you move forward I discussed about this India Russia deal regarding radio equipment and I also discussed regarding this FATF sanctions on this Pakistan and in this page number 9 there is one article regarding this Indo-Pacific strategy security I discussed this topic and one more article regarding this Damascus airport so Israeli strike caused damage to this Damascus airport so recently in 2022 prelims there were questions like places in news so here this Damascus airport which is located in Syria okay and an Israeli airstrike that struck this Damascus International Airport caused significant damage to infrastructure and rendered the main runway unserviceable okay so Syria which mainly said that because of this Israeli strike so the airway so the major import airway of airport which had been rendered unservice and this one is Venezuela and Iran they entered into 20 year agreement so both these countries they hit by this US sanctions okay but here what happened instead of that here we, Venezuela and Iran they entered into this 20 year agreement regarding supply of fuel and if you move forward in this page number 10 you can see one article is monkeypox a sexually transmitted infection so one important area that we have to know is whether it is sexually transmitted or not yes this article which mainly says that anybody who has a close physical contact with the infectious person okay and they will be having high risk of getting this monkey pox especially whenever we are having direct skin to skin contact with the lesions the lesions means the thing which mean which we can see on the surface of our body if you are affected with this monkey pox but during especially during the sexual activities then there is a chance of spreading of virus and these lesions they were initially seen mostly in the anal and genital areas okay in the four men who the virus had been found in the seminal fluid in the seminal fluid also we can see the presence of the virus and the lesion suggests that close contact during the sexual intercourse has important for the virus transmission so the presence of virus in the seminal fluid in all four men cannot be considered as a proof that sexual transmission which mainly happens unless proven that the virus could not be uh, could not have happened in any other way okay so here what happens sometimes we can see some other sexually transmitted diseases for example syphilis gonorrhea herbs okay uh, so you have to know about them as well and this one is calling an infection as sexually transmitted does not mean that this is the sole mode of the spread okay so this is about this topic and here I discussed about this James Webb telescope I discussed a topic regarding this microplastics in Antarctica I discussed about this stronger eruption okay and if you are moving forward in this FAQ there is one article regarding this uh, West Asia I discussed this topic in our uh, day before yesterday's lecture and next one is SIB's concerns around this cryptocurrency so this article that you have to refer so these are the some important articles that appear in our Hindu so by this I'm concluding I hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to Rathod Science Academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and don't forget to enroll to the courses that we are offering in our Rathod Science Academy thank you so much go to google and type Rathod's IS then you can see our website Rathod Science Academy there you have to click on login or register in the blue color so if you have not registered yet you have to click on do not have account and fill the details you have to give your name, email ID, your mobile number and password and finally you can click on this register button. And once your details are filled then registration will be successful and click on OK. And come back and click again on login and register and you have to log in now. So after once you have login click on the courses, there you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. So you can see Indian, his Indian society is at ethics, international relations, 
essay and if you buy all the courses then we will be giving access to all these courses like history economy geography and this is our mains answer writing course there you can see different batches are there and this is our prelims test series if you want to watch demo videos you have to click on play course and in history will be having five modules so there if you want to see demo videos in that so and so part of history you can click on that play course and before payment you can see only three demo videos and after payment you can see all those videos will be displayed on the screen You will Hello be students. having Welcome settings to Rathal regarding Chayes. quality and My also speed. You can adjust faculty. according to your requirement. World history lectures, the most important topic history. in the world history of the UPSC and CSA exam. That is the French next, Revolution. Let us try to see other subject, international relations. Click on play courses, and the same thing that will follows. Before payment, three demo videos. After payment, every video will be displayed on screen. and you can click on the play button then full screen and then settings so this will be follows to all hello all welcome courses. to the lecture a very important topic we are going to cover up in today's lecture that is indo pacific every day in newspaper we are hearing this word indo pacific region and the important this is regarding polity and the faculty is shashwat rago ma'am Hello and welcome everyone to Rathor Science. This is Shashwat Raghav, your Polity Faculty on this platform. We'll be basically covering our GS Paper Two, and we very well know in GS Paper Two we have governance, constitution, polity, along with social justice and IR. By me, your constitution, polity, and governance subjects will be covered. In GS, in UPSC side for GS Paper Two. only the subjects have been mentioned the governance constitution polity but faculties this is about economy so economy is taught by servants so these are some demo videos you can watch like this an economy Welcome is like 112 hours of uh, course friends from this class on work hi friends my name is sarvan kumar i am your economic faculty welcome to rathods ias friends in this class we are going to study about the gross value added what is the meaning of this gross value added now under this we have three heads basic price right factor and next is science and technology you can click on the video and you can click on play button and full screen welcome to rathod is thank you the dna that uh, kind of bank is called as a dna data bank so you need to create a dna data bank at a national level okay where the information of all the uh, criminals okay all the suspects okay. So these are the number of courses that you can watch the demo videos, and after once you watch the demo videos, and after once you satisfied, so click on the buy now button, and after that you need to enter some details. Later on you can click on proceed, and you can give your mobile number and also email ID, and finally you can use this Razorpay payment system for the purchasing of these courses.